My RuneScape bank is finally growing, and a big reason for that is because of the highly unusual and often highly profitable methods we test out on this series. With over 100 unusual methods tested, I've been able to stack up a nice amount of GP, and thanks to your ideas, I've got some more unusual methods lined up for you today. So let's dive in. This is Duke Succulus, and he's a sleepy boss that can be fought during the Desert Treasure 2 quest that was just released into the game along with three other bosses. Now, there's nothing unusual about killing a boss after it comes into the game for money, but there is something unusual about the drop table of these new bosses. It's something we've never seen in the game before. Here's how it works. Each boss has a unique drop table, and let's say you have a 1% chance at landing a drop from this unique drop table. All of these items will drop like usual, but not the ring piece, or as it's called in game, a vestige. If you hit the vestige drop table, you won't get the drop. Instead, the game takes a note of the fact that you got the drop and leaves a check. You then instead receive a normal drop, so you never actually know if you hit the ring drop table. Then, it waits until you hit the table again a second time. It leaves another check. And finally, once you hit the ring drop table for a third time, you are guaranteed to get the ring drop. This is Jagex's version of bad luck prevention, but done in a bit of a different way. Nobody's going to get lucky with the ring drop since you need three separate rolls of the drop to get it, but that also means that you will guaranteed eventually get the drop. So what they're saying is nobody is going to get the drop right away, but if you grind out 7-800 kills, you will eventually get it. And that hopefully means that nobody is going to be thousands of kills dry. It's a brand new, unique, unusual system for rare drops, and because of that, I thought it was worth including in this series. I'm curious to see how people feel about this in the long term. Personally, I've been killing the Duke since his pet, Baron, is just the ugliest, cutest thing I've ever seen in the game and I desperately want him. Also, make sure you do Desert Treasure 2, it's actually amazing. Smooth Sack Summer. Great, now that I've hopefully got your attention, Manscape has introduced their brand new Ultra Smooth package and you can get 20% off your order using code SUPRS. The Ultra Smooth kit involves an easy three-step shaving system to help you buff, protect, and smooth your most sensitive area with confidence. These are my balls. Well, my gnome balls, but they're going to work for this presentation. Step one, jump in the shower and use the crop exfoliator to help exfoliate the area and help reduce ingrown hairs while shaving. Step two, apply the crop shaving gel to the area. Since it's a clear gel, you can see exactly where you're shaving. And finally, step three, use the crop shaver with its three precision blades and extra wide lubricating strips to get the best shave at any angle. And just like that, your gnome balls will be smooth as can be. Inside the package, you'll also get five replacement blades and a storage case, which is really useful for travel. And while you're at it, you might as well get Manscaped's anti-chafing high-performance boxers 2.0. Comfortable, breathable, stylish, they're everything you can ask for from a solid pair of boxers. I got a bundle of three, which saved me money, and I've gotta say, I think this one is my favorite. So, head to manscaped.com today and get 20% off, plus free international shipping when you use promo code SUPRS at checkout. Your balls and I will thank you. Doing Chambers of Zarek can be great money. Everybody knows that, but what if I told you that you can make money here without ever finishing the raid? Cox is one of the most popular PVM activities in the game, and players are always looking for raid layouts to help them improve times or get more points for a better chance at getting loot. If you didn't know, every time you enter into a Cox, you are given a random layout of rooms. You can change the layout of the raid by simply leaving the raid lobby once you've started, starting up a new raid, and entering again. You can do this over and over and and over until you get a raid layout that you or someone else wants. In the We Do Raids Discord, there's a channel dedicated to selling raid layouts. People will pay other people to find them the best layouts possible, since it can be super time consuming to get some of the really good layouts. I won't go over every single possible layout and if it's something people would offer you money for, but I will say that the most popular raid layouts to sell involve a total of five rooms, and those five rooms are usually four combat rooms and one puzzle room, called 4C1P, or a layout with with three combat rooms and two puzzle rooms, called 3C2P. There is an entire guy in the Discord on how to find the best layouts if you want to find out more. To put it simply, you want to find a raid layout that can be done quickly and gets you good points. It's a lot of information to take in if you know nothing about raids, but you learn quickly on what layouts are good and what layouts are bad. I took a couple of my alt accounts over to raids and began scouting. Another cool thing about this method is you can pretty much do it on a fresh account. Just because you need to be a higher level to do the raid doesn't mean you need to be a higher 
higher level to scout the raid. One of my accounts is a level 27. After 25 minutes, I finally found a raid layout worth selling three combat rooms, and two puzzle rooms. I posted it in the Discord and sold the raid within 10 minutes for 750,000 GP. Just like that, after a bit of running back and forth between the board and the raid, an easy 750k. Keep in mind that this method purely depends on demand. If no one is buying scouts, then you're not going to make any money. Just because you post a scout doesn't mean it will sell right away or sometimes sell at all. It's a market type system, so patience is definitely key. I scouted two more raids that I thought were worth selling over the next hour, and luckily had two offers on both of them. Though for the second one, I had to wait over an hour for that offer to come in. 1.5 mil for the first one, and 750k for the second one. So in total, after about three hours of scouting and waiting for the layouts to sell, I had made a total of 3 million GP. About 1 million GP an hour, but but I know that prices change all the time, so this amount will most likely be different if you try this. Also, I was pretty new to this, so if any of these prices I sold these for were completely wrong, my bad. I just took the first offer that came my way every time. This is a pretty cool method. It's fairly boring, but there's lots of money to be made, and the fact that you pretty much need no stats at all to do this is a big bonus. If any of you have tips for this or some knowledge to lay on me, please let me know below. I think I may revisit this in the future once I've learned a bit more about it. You know what's not unusual? Liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Yeah, that's very common actually. It's something everybody should do, definitely. The Stonemason in Keldegrim offers you three items that aren't found in any other shops around the game. A marble block, a gold leaf, and a magic stone. I'm sure any of you who have decorated your house before are familiar with these items. Now, usually for these unusual methods that involve shops, we find items for cheap and are able to flip them for profit on the Grand Exchange. But this shop is not cheap. A gold leaf, 130k. A marble block, 325k. A magic stone, 925k. However, all of these items can profit you some nice GP if you sell them to the Grand Exchange. Luckily, our previous unusual money-making methods have made us quite a bit of GP, so we have some starting gold to work with. 100 mil to be exact. Buying one of each item from the shop will cost you 1.43 million GP. Now, make sure you don't buy anything from the shop if that stock shows 19 instead of 20. Anytime you buy an item from here, the prices go up by 3%, which loses you all profit margins. Now, if you want, you can speed up the process by hopping worlds, or you can wait about 30 seconds and the shop will restock. It takes about six and a half minutes of waiting in one world for me to buy nine of each item. In total, it cost me 12,854,600 GP. Unfortunately, this isn't a method where you can just sell the items instantly for 5% below med price. You have to be a bit careful with your listings. When items get above a certain amount of GP, the Grand Exchange tax becomes a big factor in your profit margin. So you have to list them high enough to the point where you don't lose too much off the tax and you're still profiting off your initial investment. For example, if I list this magic stone for 990K, the Grand Exchange tax already takes away 9.9k, which means I receive 980k. So instead of profiting 15k, I profit 5k. That's one issue when it comes to mass buying expensive items. The tax is just brutal, but good thing taxes aren't a thing outside of RuneScape, right? <laughs> Anyways, all 27 of the items sold for these prices, a total of 13,013,055 GP. It cost me 12.854 million GP, which means we profited 158,455 GP. If you're willing to do this efficiently, I'd say you'd be able to get about 9 full inventories an hour. If each inventory profits you 158k, you'd be looking at about 1.4 million GP an hour. Not too bad, but don't forget that your initial investment buying all of these items would be 115 million GP. It's truly a high risk, high reward method, which we don't get often on this series. Money can definitely be made, just be a bit careful with this one. If I were to tell you that you can build a crystal ball inside your player-owned house, what do you think its purpose would be? Maybe tell you your future, or give you next week's lottery numbers? Nope, it actually lets you change the elemental alignment of a staff. Check this out. If I use a staff of earth on the crystal ball, I can change it into a staff of air, water, or fire. 
for free. If you upgrade the crystal ball into an elemental sphere or crystal of power, you can even change the elemental alignment of battle staves and mystic staves for an additional cost. But there's no profit to be made with the upgrades. The original crystal ball, which can be built at 42 construction in the study of your POH, is the only one that makes you profit. Check out the prices of the staves. A staff of air is 900 GP more than a staff of earth. And we can change a bunch of earth staves into air staves for free with this crystal orb. All you have to do is buy a bunch of earth staves from the GE, change the left click option of them in our inventory to use instead of wield, then one by one use each staff on the crystal orb to turn them into air staves. Turning an entire inventory of earth staves into air staves takes about 40 seconds. As soon as you're done, just teleport to a bank, grab more earth staves, go back to your house, and repeat the process. Pretty easy, right? Well, it is, there's just one small downside. Every elemental staff has a buy limit on the GE of 125. And since each inventory takes about a minute, it means you'd be done with everything in just about five minutes. Well, if you want, you can also turn water staves into air staves as well. They buy for about 150 GP more than earth staves, and will still make you about 600 GP profit per staff. The thing is, that will also only take about five minutes. This entire method can be done in less than 15 minutes every four hours. And depending on prices, you'll profit between 180 to 200k. I made 187k when I finished everything. Since you can't do this for an entire hour, maybe look at this more as a once or twice a day method to help make money for a bond. Or just leave some long-term offers in on the Grand Exchange so you buy these things overnight and then you can do a bunch more when you wake up. For those of you who are low on cash and don't have levels for higher level PVMing, this is a really easy way to make some decent money on the side. If you know what this item is, major props, because I didn't until trying out this next method. It's called a Beloga's Blessing, and it can be obtained from the Tithe Farming minigame. Before you can buy it from Farmer Gricola's shop, however, you have to speak to his daughter who can be found upstairs in his house. I'm sorry, but every time I see her name, I just think it's Bologna. I don't know, anybody else? After a conversation with her where she constantly calls her sister a cow, you can pay her 75,000 GP, as long as you're wearing a Zamorak item, to be able to buy her blessing from Gricola's shop. Here's how this blessing is going to make us some money. First, we head north to the vinery in Asidius and plant 12 grape seeds and saltpeter in the 12 open grapevine slots. These will take about 35 minutes to fully grow into some nice and juicy grapes. This is just enough time for us to knock out the next step in the method, getting some tithe farm points. We'll need some points from this minigame to get these Beloga blessings that we were talking about earlier. Since the grapes take 35 minutes to grow, we can fit in around two to three games in before we have to head back. You'll need at least two games or around around 13 points to have enough Beloga's Blessings for all of your grapes. Once you have your points, you can buy as many Beloga's Blessings as you need from Farmer Gricola's shop. I just bought as many as I could with the points I had. Okay, here's where the method gets neat. Head back to the vinery and wait for your grapes to finish growing. When they're ready to harvest, make sure you have your magic secateurs equipped, check their health, and with Beloga's Blessings in your inventory, begin to harvest. Now usually you would receive normal grapes from the vines, but because you have the blessings, you'll instead receive Zamrax grapes, which look a bit different. Off of all the vines, I harvested 162 of these Zamorak grapes. Now, if you wanted, you could sell these grapes straight to the GE for 150k. Or, you could go one step further and turn these grapes into their true final form, Wines of Zamorak. Grab yourself some jugs of water from the Grand Exchange, use them with these Zamorak grapes, and get yourself some easy Wines of Zamorak. In my case, the 162 wines gained me 32.4 thousand cooking XP, and I sold them all for 143k. More than I would have made if I had just sold the grapes on their own. So let's recap. In 35 minutes, I made 143k from the wines. I also received 32.6 thousand cooking XP and 24.5 thousand farming XP from the tight farm and harvesting the grapes. I'll let you guys decide if you think this is worth it. While the GP per hour isn't phenomenal, you are still getting farming and and cooking XP, so over the long term, the GP and XP will stack up doing this method. You could also always use the Wines of Zamorak for Herblore and take it one step further and level that skill up as well. The more I think about it, the more I think this could be a great way for Iron Men to train all of those skills without feeling like you're wasting any time. Either way, it's an unusual way of doing things, which is exactly what we like on this series. Desert Treasure 2 was just released into the game, and during the quest, you find yourself up in this area of the map. Weiss, or as a German would say, 
advice. Anytime I find myself in an area that I don't usually go to, I like seeing what kind of item spawns can be found there. Weiss has some cool ones. It's the only area in the game where you can find a spawn of an arctic pine log. Usually, these logs can only be obtained by chopping arctic pine trees on the island of Natiznan. You may remember using them during the Fremnig Isles quest, but you can now find five of them on the ground in this area. Arctic pine logs have had a pretty steady price of around 500 GP each for a couple of years, and they had a recent slight spike in price after the forestry update that also recently came into the game. Since there's five of these logs that spawn here, we might as well test out how many we can pick up in one hour. The method, teleport to the area with an icy basalt, hop over an agility shortcut, and run back and forth between the five spawns of the pine logs. Every time I finish picking up the five, I hop to a new world and repeat the process. When the inventory is full, I teleport to a bank, take a sip of stamina, and teleport back to Weiss. After one hour, I had picked up 538 arctic pine logs, which I then promptly sold on the GE for 573 GP each. This made me a total of 308,000 GP. I took away 20k for the icy basalt teleports and stamina potions, and I'm now left with 288k in one hour of picking up arctic pine logs. Honestly, you could probably make close to this amount of money just chopping the arctic pine trees themselves, and that's way more AFK. But I guess if you ever find yourself doing a 0 GP in the bank challenge and want to make a couple hundred k out of thin air, this could be the place to do it. Thanks for watching today's unusual money making video. If you have a method you want me to try out for a future video, send me a message on Discord, Twitter, or let me know in the comments below. Make sure to check out my last unusual money making video or my brand new series that just came out called One Remains. If you liked Gilinar games, I think you're going to like it. You can click them on your screen right now. I'll see you next time.